Welcome back gamers, Powered Heal here, and today we're going to be talking about druid runes. Now, in case you're not aware of what a rune is, if this is like your first time checking out uh, the channel and you're new to Season of Discovery, a rune is basically a uh, an augment that gets slotted into a piece of armor. Now, currently we have uh, three options here for chests, legs, and gloves, but apparently more of these are coming in the future. And you can only have one augment uh, per slot, and as you can see, you can choose from these, and there's going to be more choices as well in the future, where at least we're being led to believe, but these are the current ones that we've been given um, right now. So you would pick between one, and uh, you'd slot it in there, and you'd get either a new ability, or sometimes it's like a passive, almost like a talent sort of thing. And uh, today we're going to be going over the druids for healing, specifically PvE healing. And we may do some commentary on uh, a couple, like maybe like one of the other ones that I just want to say a few words about. But it's mostly going to be uh, PvE healing. And before I start, I have to say this is it, this one may sound a bit negative overall, but I don't want it to come off as like I hate druids or anything. Uh, anything like that. It's just um, there's a bit of like context and so I'm going to start this one off a bit differently. Normally we jump right in and we start talking about the runes uh, and I don't want to delay that too much. There's going to be timestamps in the video so you can always jump around if you don't want to hear the little preamble. But I think it's important because it's going to like uh, <clears throat> it's kind of going to color the rest of what I'm saying and kind of like give it a bit of context. Um, in terms of like why I think the way I think, right? So I think that a lot of the times when I do these guides, I'm going to be doing them for the idea is what do I think the class is going to be overall? How, how do I think these runes are going to affect the class overall over the course of a season, right? And that's going to be probably mostly level 60 content. Um, so I'm kind of thinking for like the late game here, right? Um, obviously these are being introduced at level 25 when the level caps can be 25, right? So things can be drastically different at level 25. Uh, and although like some of the more core things like beacon is still going to be functionally the same at uh, like level 60 as it is at 25, there's other runes that I think have a much wider uh, power fluctuation. And I think that that's mostly going to have to do with the raid size. And that's kind of what I want to get into here at first, because you may see some of these things perform like really well uh, in the 10 man content. And I think there's going to be a very good reasons for that, but they may not perform as well in the 40 man content. And, you know, eventually the game is going to get to the 40 man content. Eventually we are going to be level 60. And if that's a big part of the game for you, and that's why you want to play and you like, like doing the big content, the 40 mans and stuff like that, then, you know, choosing a class based on what's good at level 25, you might feel a bit misled. So that's kind of like the point of this is to kind of illuminate some of the differences and how these abilities might fit in in 10 man and how they might fit in, in 40. And basically, to sum things up kind of quickly to give you the cliff notes is I think Druid is a class that performs a lot better in smaller raid sizes, um, barring certain things, for example, right? Like, for example, if they let Wild Growth, which is one of the things here, if this was just uncapped, you know, and it could heal, like, I guess it wouldn't make sense because it, it, it kind of goes on like a group. But if you had something like, um, I guess like a better example would be like if you had something like Shaman's Healing Rain on the Druid, but it could heal, like, you know, the whole raid, then obviously that that kind of skews things a little bit. But uh, Druid doesn't really have anything like that that, that we see. And if it, if, it, if it did have anything, if, it, if anything like that kind of gets added in the future, it's probably going to be party-based, right? Because everything we've seen so far has been party-based. So um, barring anything that like affects the entire raid that's given explicitly for that purpose, which doesn't seem like it's going to be the case at all, I think Druid does a lot better in, in these smaller um, raid size settings. It, it, I want to go back to like 2019 Vanilla, right? Because in 2019 Vanilla, there was a buff cap. And Druids were basically 
completely there for Mark of the Wild, right? I think in optimal cases, I didn't play a ton of Druid back then, although I did play Druid because I wanted to play all the healers. But, like, if you were, like, actually trying to be efficient, you were basically uh, there for Mark of the Wild. You know, you were spotting people who died and stuff like that. Um, you were fairy firing everything, right? You, you'd never use your own innervate. And to be honest, like, you're probably not even doing any real healing in the sense of, like, you are probably most useful just literally cancel casting on a tank or something, you know, trying, like, waiting for them to get dropped. You let your big uh, healing touch go through to bring, you're like an extra safety net or something like that, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, Swift Men spec back then wasn't even really a thing for the most part because people didn't even, like, if you were in even a reasonably good guild, the buff cap really killed that. I mean, depending on your guild and how reasonable they want it to be, like, I personally think it's absolutely worth dropping, like, one buff to be able to have, like, a rejuve or a, um regrowth on the on the tank because and if if the druid was going to play swift men spec because it's honestly just so powerful to have that that quick instant heal and it's only like a 20 second cooldown but a lot of druids just kind of didn't even bother i feel like and didn't even bother go swift men spec didn't even try and argue that point you know they just kind of seeded it and they're almost playing more of like a like this weird balance hybrid heal spec and um that, that was, like, the worst of it, right? And then Season Master rolls around, and the first announcement we get, one of the earlier ones, is, oh, the buff cap's gone, right? And everybody's like, ooh, the, the buff cap, you know, hots. And you see these posts popping up all over Reddit. And it's like, oh, druids? 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 Multiple druids? How many druids are we running? You know what I mean? And it's like, and somebody's like, well, Rejuve doesn't attack. Yeah, yeah, but still no buff cap, you know what I mean? We can... We can run druids now, and everybody's all excited about druids. Oh, like, we're going to see, like, druids have a much more prominent place in raiding and stuff like that. And then we get to see the mastery. Uh, you know, we... <clears throat> and keep in mind, this is actually harder content um, where theoretically kind of, like, more mana-efficient heals might be actually good here, right? And, you know, druids pretty much just, again, completely irrelevant for the most part, right? Now... A couple caveats here, because I know some people that are watching, especially if you're like a pumper druid or whatever, you're going to have some bones to pick with this. Now, obviously, you can push a lot of HPS as a druid, okay? Like, I've done it in Classic. Um, I've topped, like, Blackwing Lair, I feel like it's especially easy to do. That's one instance where um, it's, like, very advantageous towards certain druid specs. Um, I've done high HPS and MC, high HPS and AQ, relatively high HPS and Nax. It, it's very possible, right? But in a lot of these cases, you are, like, sort of griefing, to put it politely. And it's fine that you're griefing. Like, nobody really cares, right? Because, like, most of the content's easy, and we're all just, like, playing the game to have fun at the end of the day, right? And, um, you know, people need your buff. They need your fairy fire. So they're going to give you, I feel like, a certain amount of leeway within the raid to kind of, like, do you. Um, because if everybody had the super hyper-efficiency mindset, a lot of people probably just would not want to play Druid, and there'd be, like, no Druids on the server. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, you can do this healing, but you're going to be doing a lot of overhealing. It's not really efficient with your own mana. You're probably casting Innervate on yourself, which is not really good because it's just better on a priest and stuff like that. So obviously druids can do a lot of healing, but they're not really good at doing a lot of effective healing in a mana efficient way, is the way I'd say it, uh, in the 40 mans. And the reason for that is that there's just too many healers that get brought to 40 mans. Um, now when I see too, say too many, this might be another point of contention, right? Um, because... People are going to be like, well, you know, we've always brought like 10 or 11 or 12, depending on the raid. And, um, you know, people still die in the raid 
and stuff like that. So therefore, you know, hey, maybe we're not bringing enough healers. Maybe it actually should be more healers. Maybe running 10 healers is actually running light on healers. But the reality of the situation is, is that, you know, people just kind of get lazy. And I feel like that's why people die. And to be honest, bringing more healers sometimes I feel like could be a contributing factor into why people die. Because what ends up happening is the more healers you bring, the less clear it is, like whose role is what in the raid. Because what ends up happening is you, if you ever looked at like a classic healing assignment sheet, right? You have like all these tanks on it that are like tanking for like 30% of the instance, you know, like they're not like real tanks. They're like DPS warriors who are being asked to tank for certain portions of the dungeon they have like heal healers assigned to them. They're not tanking most of the dungeon. So like what's happening is, you know, they're just DPSing and then they have to tank like lava packs and the person who hasn't had to heal them now technically has to heal them, but they're not actually aware that they have to heal them, right? Like, like yeah, they read the assignment sheet and they see, but they've been playing for like 20 or 30 minutes not healing them. And then they swap the tank and they're not getting healers from like the heals from people that, that they're supposed to be getting heals from. So they're getting heals from other people who are now not healing their assignments. And it tends to just become like a clusterfuck because nobody is really like tends to be following their assignments to a T because there's so many healers in the raid that if you were to do that, it would just be like the most boring experience ever. And some of these bosses like hit or even trash mobs, like, it hits so lightly that, like, you would just, you'd be doing nothing. You'd be, like, AFK simulator, you know, if you were, like, only healing your tank exclusively and stuff like that. So because there's, like, so much extra healing to go around, um, people basically kind of start to, to wander a bit, you know what I mean? Like, they start healing the raid, the raid healers start healing the tank, and most of the time it's fine and it and it works out. And healing assignments are good, I think, generally speaking, because the main thing that I'm looking for when I've been like a, a class lead and like a heal lead in a lot of guilds, and the main thing that I'm looking for when I'm putting up healing assignments is basically like, like I know people's like nature and tendencies, and the only thing I'm like really looking for is that you if I'm assigning you to something is that you're keeping it kind of like a focus on like you're keeping it in one part of your mind you know what I mean so I don't want you to like absolutely forget that I put you on tank here or something like that or I don't want you to like absolutely forget that on this other fight you're supposed to be healing the raid here right if you have a good ability to heal the raid or something like that but you know I'm not like going through the logs and being like oh look at this like, this heal is not on, you know what I mean? Like, you casted this heal on this tank, and you're supposed to be healing this tank or something. And, and I think that, like, that tends to be counterproductive because at the end of the day, you want people looking and trying to make plays on people who might be in danger in the raid in general. You know what I mean? It's better to have, like, 10 to 12 people focusing on that, and then they're kind of also have their assignments in mind than just have people tunneling on their assignments and then if anybody messes up things go to shit so i prefer that style but like it's there's still too many healers in the raid like i think you could honestly heal molten core with like with like six healers you might be able to do it with less and in in uh season of discovery depending on like how they tune it you could do it with um very few amount of healers i think the the one the caveats here tend to come in with like the um the weird things for example like the problem you might run into trying to six heal molten core maybe the dispels for example especially if you're trying to do it on horde um like that could be a problem right it just would be like maybe prohibitive to do that like there'd be it'd be too annoying like maybe you could do it but you wouldn't want to do it um but it wouldn't really be the healing that would be the problem, at least if things were as they are in Classic 2019, right? And um, if you could 6-heal Molten Core, 
I think druids would be like all stars because when you drop healers, um, you, you're now forcing your raid to kind of like specialize a bit more. The healers in your raid to specialize and kind of like really focus on what they're doing. But more than that, I think they're actually like incentivized to to do that because it, it becomes like a necessity at that point. You know what I mean? Like you, if you're going to run six healers for a 40 man molten core, you can't have everybody just fucking around doing whatever they want, right? Like the people going into the raid are going to realize that. It, it almost becomes like, wow, like we're kind of spread thin here. So like we really need to like, hey, I'm going to talk to this person. Like you could actually have no healing assignments going into a 40 man molten core, bringing six healers in, a, in like a pug and they'd probably start talking to each other. You know what I mean? They would they would be like, like, oh, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Whereas, like, in a 40-man, if you bring 12 healers, uh, like, they're just going to be healing everyone, and everything is mostly going to be fine, like, 90% of the time. Um, so, basically, I think druids would just kill it in that, like, six-man healer molten core situation, because... You could get so much efficiency out of your hots, it would be, it'd just be really good. Um, and like other classes could get a lot of efficiency out, out of their spells. Um, especially, I think in this season of Discovery version with like uh, Paladin and Paladins and Beacon, you could easily set up like very low heal rate comps, and uh, it'd be like very mana efficient and druids would have like a very pivotal role in these and that's kind of like what happens in 10 man because in 10 man you're probably bringing two healers right um historically in classic wow or in like the history of wow in general for 10 man content if a fight was like really bad you maybe need three healers but for the most part you're two healing 10 man or, or that's that's like the goal at least and then in some cases you can one heal 10 man uh, depending on the circumstances and stuff like that and the gear level. But I'd say that generally it's shot for like two healers uh, to be healing 10-man raids. And when I was doing 10-mans and like Wrath and TBC and stuff like that when the games originally launched, uh, not like the newer classic versions, it was kind of almost like second nature to be like, yo, like my class is kind of good at this. Like I'll just handle this if you can get that. And the, and the other person would be like, yeah, yeah, that's... You know, that sounds good with me. And the run would go, like, flawlessly, right? Just, like, a bit of communication. You know what you need to do and your class does well. They know what they need to do and their class does well. You communicate, like, a little bit before the raid, and it's, like, super easy to handle things. And in situations like that, like, a druid is going to be able to use all their hots and pretty much, like, all their abilities to maximum effectiveness it, it almost reminds me of like five mans where like druid is not seen as a very good five man healer in vanilla and uh i think that like ob the obvious reason is that they don't have res right but actually i think that if you are kind of like removing that point then i would rather have a druid heal five man than a shaman any day uh it's like not even close like druids are, I'd say I think priest is probably the the best, uh, and then it might be druid actually, in like uh, vanilla twenty nineteen for healing five mans, assuming we don't need the uh, like the actual res, um, because the hots are just like really good, uh, rank four heal is really strong, really mana efficient, especially uh, healing touch, especially if you have like a, a decent amount of plus healing already. Um, Swift Mend is is amazing if you're allowed to use it. It's a great like safety net. You also have uh, Nature Swiftness if you need it. Um, you just have like a lot of tools. You have Innervate, which is insane. Like Innervate honestly almost makes the Druid kind of like better than priest a little bit in five man um it's just priest has like really good 
utility. I'd say like they have like like Druid has good utility. They have heals for a lot of situations, but Priest just kind of takes it to the next level because they have the fast spammable flash heal if needed. They have this similar like heal to a Druid's healing touch. They have shield. They have they have the whole package. They have renew, which is like arguably you know before certain things it's actually it's better than rejuve right so i i'd give the nod to priest but druid is like a, a close second and if and like on a pull where the druid is using innervate the druid definitely has the edge over the priest right because it's like you get a, a new mana bar essentially um and the, the priest really has no way to to compete with that to be honest um because you don't have a mana cooldown of your own so Druid is very good in small settings, and I think you're going to see them do well, especially with some of these new spells in the 10-man. But just keep in mind that when you get to the 25-man, it's just going to be... Or the 40-man, the it's just going to be rough because so many of these things are going to be getting eaten, and it's going to be hard to get full value. And that's always been the struggle of Druid, it will always be the struggle of Druid, and unless this uh, season brings with it a ton of like rot damage, then I don't really see, um, I don't see Druids really rising to the top. You know, I I think that having these new spells is great. Like having more tools is always better than having less tools, right? It's undeniable. So like, there's no way having Life Bloom is gonna hurt you and make you a worse healer. There's no way having Living Seed is going to hurt you. There's no way having Wild Growth is going to hurt you. But it's just probably not going to be as dramatic a difference as some people are thinking when they see like, oh, these like retail spells, you know, kind of getting put into putting into Druid and in, in uh, WoW Classic. It's going to be so OP. Like, I just don't really see it. Um, and I think you're mostly going to probably see like still one druid per 40 man um in an optimal setting so just keep that in mind as we go through this and i know that was long-winded but uh, thank you for bearing with me so getting to the chest slot um i just want to talk about figure storm rage for a second it's not really a healer thing uh but please give us this from like level one i heard that we're going to get a rune at level two uh if this is the level two rune then God bless the devs, honestly. Like, I'll never say another bad thing about this game in my life if they give us this rune at level 2 on God because... I, <laughs> fuck Druid 1 to 20. Like, I'll tell you that much. Like, I hate this class, leveling 1 to 20, so please give us Furious Storm Rage. That would be pretty amazing. <laughs> okay, so with that out of the way... Let's get to the uh, actual healing talent here, Living Seed. Um, now, the thing that I like about Living Seed is that it's not a hot, right? And um, it, it it's kind of like Earth Shield in a way, and but it scales off the actual spell itself and. Uh, so all, the healing you're going to get from it is going to be effective. Now, the problem, though, I think, comes with um, how are we, like, consistently applying Living Seed? You know what I mean? So I think that no matter what you're taking this, because there's nothing else here, I mean, maybe they'll add more runes in the future that are better, right? But you're going to be taking this as Resto, but it's just a matter of, like, how much healing is it actually going to do? Now, the good thing is, is if you are healing with, like, a higher rank of healing touch, and it does crit, then, you know, you're you're going to be getting a decent chunk of healing on that Living Seed, for sure. So that's actually really cool. Um, but, you know, your healing touch is probably not going to be critting that often. Now, we are going to be getting world buffs, which is good, because you get, like, 18%. Assuming we're allowed to use the same world buffs. I don't know if we get new world buffs. Uh, but if we have the same ones, it's like Dragon Slayer is 10. Songflower is 5. You'll have that for most of the raid at least, most likely. And then uh, the Slip Kick from Dire Maul is 3. 
So that's an 18% extra healing right off the bat. I think like the obvious thing people would look to for Living Seed is uh, Regrowth, right? Because it obviously has the 50% base crit you can talent into from Resto. The problem is that uh, I just... I don't really like that spec a ton, generally speaking. Um, I think it's insane on Veilistraz in Blackwing Lair because you have infinite mana, right? And then if you kill Veil fast, then being that spec and having that buff while going through the suppression room is absolutely cracked. Like, this is one of the reasons why Blackwing Lair is, like, really good for druids. And then I also think it fits kind of well into the tech pack, uh, the, the tech pack area, because I think one of the, that's an area where traditionally druids would struggle to contribute because the damage comes out really fast and it's very bursty. And, uh, if you're running the regrowth spec, especially the one where if you crit, you get the, um, reduced cast time on the next spell and you're using the... It's like the five piece tier two, I think, right? Then you're actually kind of getting those regrowths out like very fast. They're almost kind of like flash heals. And they have the dot component. So if they don't fully bring somebody to fold, they're kind of ticking them up afterwards. And then the living seed would actually be kind of nice there because they're probably going to take some other instance of damage, which will proc it. And then they might actually just top off from that point. So I really like the regrowth spec in Blackwing Lair. But I think, like, outside of Blackwing Lair, it's kind of more of, like, a... Like, you will do good HPS with it, absolutely. But you're kind of ripping through mana to do it. And you're probably... Like, if you're using it in other instances, you're probably giving yourself your own inner rate a lot. Which is probably just not optimal. Um, right? So it's like, yeah, you're doing... You're keeping up on the healing meter, but you're also just, like, using a cooldown that could have made your best priest like absolutely take over the meter you know what i mean um not that everything is about healing meters or anything but i'm I'm just using it as an example to talk about throughput so yeah i just i don't know that this is going to be like that good but it's it's nice to have you know what i mean i'll say that um it, it's not terrible and i It'll be interesting if, like, we get other sources of crit itemization. Not that I think that this would be something that you necessarily want to, like, go crit for. But, like, it's po I guess what I mean is, like, um, it's possible that some other good gear for a druid may just end up having crit on it or something like that, which may make this a bit more valuable. And, like I said, with world buffs... Um, it is just inherently more valuable than normal. The only problem is the druid heals tend to be longer casted, right? So it's like, you know, if this is on a priest flash heal, it's kind of like a bit different because you have more chances to crit. Whereas if you're actually casting it with the long uh, healing touches, then you're just not going to have as many opportunities regardless, right? So, uh, yeah, I think it's like, not terrible, but I don't think this is going to be a game changer at all, basically. It's just something you're going to take, passive, set and forget, and you're not really going to play around it or play into it too much, necessarily. Uh, it's just going to be there. So, moving down to uh, Life Bloom. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about... Uh... Oh, there is something I just wanted to say about this, and I'm, it was when I was talking about it not being a hot, and um, I'll, I guess I'll kind of get into it with Life Bloom. This is a good transitional thing, because it's, it may sound like I hate hots there, and it's not that I hate hots, but um, I think that hots, especially when it comes to large raid sizes, they're very tricky to use, and... They tend to be very mana efficient, but they're very tricky to use. And because of that, it's almost as if they need, like, some type of protection, I would say. Um, 
some type of like overheal protection like maybe like if your hot is like doing a certain percentage of overheal like if it's overhealing too much if it's not being used essentially because somebody keeps repeatedly getting topped um then it refunds like a percentage of the mana based on like the amount that uh like hasn't actually gone through as a heal if that makes sense if they could work something like that into hots i think they'd be a lot more viable right because it's not such a risk casting them at that point and i think that's kind of like what they're trying to do with life bloom um when they added life bloom in the burning crusade because they may have like kind of recognized that problem from vanilla especially because they got the version of um like they got to see druid hots in a 40 man setting first where they probably didn't look so hot a lot of the time at least um sometimes they look really good like one of the things that i would do in like 2015 classic was like or 2019 classic on well, my priest actually but the same concept because we're using renew is domo was like one of the only fights in mc that would last like any even reasonable length of time right because the game was so easy and everybody knew so much and the instance the molten core instance itself was like tuned so weakly compared to like even p servers and stuff like that that people just stomped through it on on live in 2019 so domo was like the first fight that actually stood alive for a little bit so a lot of the healers actually just completely blew their load in like the first you know 30 40 seconds of that fight and if you were smart uh, and held a bit of mana you could actually get like so much hps in the tail end of that fight with hots and i feel like that tends to be the only time i'm getting really good value out of hots on my priest i mostly play the priest but also on my druid is when the rest of the raid is oom you know what i mean if i can find a way to play mana efficiently enough to we get into a situation where Maybe it's like an over pull or just like the fight goes longer than expected. Maybe people die or something like that. Uh, the hots can be really good to um, to fill in those gaps. But otherwise, it's just really hard to make them do effective healing, right? And not just a bunch of over healing for a reasonable... And, and they still cost like a decent amount of mana, right? And the life bloom thing is not... It's not directly... Um, <clears throat> kind of dealing with what I said where it's giving you mana back based on what wasn't healed but it's still giving you um a certain like half the cost of the spell back and I think the idea is that it ticks faster than a typical hot right so it's like what they're trying to do here is they're trying to get it so that it's doing something more often than it's doing nothing which can sometimes, the other hots can sometimes feel like they're doing nothing more often than they're doing something, and you're getting mana back from it. So I think that's why Life Bloom tends to be uh, pretty good. <clears throat> and, you know, obviously we'll have to see the mana cost and stuff like that to actually work out the mana efficiency, but I don't expect it to be bad. Like, it, it's probably going to be like, you know, early TBC Life Bloom effectiveness on the tank or something like that, I would assume. You know, I don't think they're going to like make it so that you don't want to use the spell that would be pointless right why give it to us and then um you get the obviously the global cooldown reduction on rejuven life bloom and a lot of people have been citing this and i actually don't think this is that big a deal but it's not bad you know it's just something extra they're giving you so it's not nothing to complain about obviously but again like this is just not the type of game where you're like going from frame to frame just trying to spam rejuve out as much as possible on everybody in the raid that's just kind of not how the game tends to be played um you know it'll be nice to help get your life blooms out like on the tank um faster but i just don't see it really helping your rejuve a ton i mean it's it's just obviously it feels nice to be able to do it quicker right so that's always good but it i don't think you're you're not going to be into this style of play where you're just constantly putting rejuves on everybody 
Um, I don't really see that being effective unless, like I said, they drastically change the game, which they might, but I just, I don't really see it, right? I don't think that's, uh, I, I doubt that's what we're going to get. So I think Life Boom will be good. Um, the one thing I never cared for about Life Bloom in PvE, and I understand, like, why this is good in PvP because of the dispel aspect, but the the whole, like, it doing the burst of healing when its duration expires, again, this is something that's kind of, like, <clears throat> it's great for... It's great for, like, low, like, uh, content, smaller content, basically 10-man content, right? And it's harder to pull off in 40-man content because there's just going to be so many heals coming in, especially, like, if you're playing on Alliance with, like, a beacon on the tank or something like that, like, good luck getting that bloom portion of the life heal or the life bloom to really, like, work out for you a lot. You know what I mean? It's just going to be really tough. And I guess, like, you could, um, you could, like, roll the life bloom to refresh the stack if it's not going to pop at the right time. But then you're not getting the refund. Like, you're kind of, like, delaying the refund even more, right? So, I'm not really sure, like, how, how you'd want to play that, to be honest. But... I just, I could see that being a lot better in 5-man content and 10-man content where you can kind of like be like, oh, okay, I know the bloom's coming up, so I'm just going to like get the full effectiveness of this, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to, okay, we're healing with the heal over time, you know, I'm casting a couple of heals on him, oh, it's like one second left, okay, maybe I won't cast here, oh, it blooms, you get all that effective value out of it. And somebody's not just going to be sniping the shit out of you. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is definitely going to happen in the 40, man. And it's not even going to be intentional. You know, it's not like people are trying to grief you. It's just how the raid is going to go most of the time. So, I think it'll be it'll be good. It's going to look really good early on, probably. And I think, again, just less so once we get into the actual 40, man content. Because there's just too many healers in the raid. And a couple, one more point about the too many healers in the raid thing before we move on to wild growth. So that's not a true criticism of having the healers there, I guess. It's just like the reality of the situation is that the raids could be healed with less people. Now, does that mean that you should heal them with less people? Well, not necessarily. And I understand why most people opt to not do that. I mean, first of all, if you're playing Horde and Classic, you kind of like need six shaman and before this season of discovery they were all going to have to be resto right if you're running like an, a, a lot of warriors and then you need priests to be able to dispel and you need one druid at least for mark so right there you're already over like six healer molten core molten core or whatever right um but even if you could like raid comp wise bring it down to six healers I understand the idea of just like we might as well bring more healers to kind of like be able to cover more you know what I mean and then we don't need as maybe as like uh as immaculate of a performance out of the healers that we have you know so especially if you're running in a raid where you know maybe you're not like super confident in all your healers I think generally it just makes sense to run with more than less because in classic dropping like a healer for an extra dps is nowhere near as effective as it's going to be like in retail. You know what I mean? Where that's like a that's like a huge thing in in 20 man retail raid. Is like, "Oh, can we like three or four heal this fight?" You know what I mean? Um, but in this version of the game, the percentage of your overall damage that any given DPS does does is like much less even if you're bringing in another warrior. So, I understand why people don't try and six heal so don't worry i'm not i'm not that dense in that respect i'm just saying that the fact that all the raids tend to be overhealed does hurt the druids effective healing so coming on to wild growth um you know this is just it's a good spell right it's not it's not a bad spell uh i think that 
I don't remember if it worked like this. And I used to play Druid in um, Wrath of the Lich King. I didn't play it in this new Wrath Classic that just came out, but I played it like back in the day um, to that Wrath of the Lich King, the, the first iteration. And I don't remember if it applied... Um, like more quickly at first and then ta uh, tailors off but if it didn't then this is a really good change to have to wild growth because like I feel like that's when you need it more you know what I mean um and that's always been like my kind of gripe with the druid and why I've kind of gone I've kind of gone away from druid healing when I used to heal some things back in retail is that I didn't like not being able to put the the life back instantly you know what I mean? When I was playing my Druid in Wrath, I just kept remembering, like... And Wrath was a, an expansion where there definitely were some good Druid fights. I feel like there was a decent amount of rot damage sometimes. But even on those fights, I'd just be like... But I'm not a priest, you know? Or I can just be either putting this back or preventing it with Bubble entirely. You know what I mean? And the whole raid feels a lot safer uh, in those circumstances than they do sitting around at, like, 50% health with a hot on them. Uh, where they can be gibbed by something else if something else stray hits them. So, I like the fact that it's more aggressive early, because it makes it feel like more of like that prayer of healing style thing, or a circle of healing in this case, because I guess it targets a group. Um, that's really good. And I think, again, like, in the lower content, it's going to be great. In five mans, it's it's great. There's not really the only other uh, five person heal you had was tranquility, right? Uh, before which had a cooldown and isn't wasn't nearly as good as it is in retail, uh, or in, in at least in some iterations of retail, right? So yeah, this is gonna be like great for five mans. It's like built for five man, right? Um, this is another tool you can you can use there. It's probably going to be really good in 10 mans if you're, like, two healing, you know? Um, but I think in 40 mans, again, it's going to run into the snipe issue. And it's that's going to be the same with all these hot-type effects. You know what I mean? They're all going to struggle uh, just getting, getting sniped by other things. And it's going to be basically, like, impossible to, to prevent... So I, I think if you are going to use this, uh, well, you, you're, you probably are going to use it, right? Because you're not going to take something else here. But you just have to be patient with it, you know? And hopefully they give us fights that test the mana pool a little bit more. And I think, like, the more they test the mana pool, the better these heal over time things become. Because they tend to be, like, more efficient heals. Um, especially because a lot of the direct heals people are casting tend to be quicker cast heals, um, like the flash heals and stuff like that. So these gain a lot of value on any fight where mana is going to be strained. And it'll be fun to get more fights like that, honestly. like I, I, Those are the types of fights that I enjoy. So I really do hope they add more of those. But if they don't, and the content's pretty damn easy, then... Wild Growth just isn't going to be doing a lot in a 40-person raid, I don't think. Um, obviously, like, you know, there'll be some caveats where, you know, maybe you're, you guys are just lacking good AoE. Like, for example, maybe you're Alliance and you only are able to field, like, two priests or something, you know, and you have a couple druids instead. In situations like that, it could do great. And I think that that is one thing, too, where all these classes having more tools now, and that goes for not just the druid, but like the shaman, uh, the priest already had a lot of tools, but um, the paladin, it kind of just makes them more versatile and you can now mix and match more, right? So in an optimal raid comp, there's obviously going to be like certain things you want, and that's probably even going to be from just a buff perspective, right? Like just on paper, buff-wise, you're going to want like this, this, and this. But if you really needed to um, just field a roster for one day that was, you know, far from ideal but could still work, you could have druids legitimately be your AoE healers now in a lot of cases. Um, like, there's a lot of cases in Classic WoW where 
I'd be using a Prayer of Healing on the Priest to put back some damage, or maybe in, in the new version, like Circle of Healing, where you could just wild growth that damage as a druid uh, in most cases, you know what I mean? And maybe some of those people would have to be spotted a little bit, but it, you could make it work for sure. Um, so I, I think that's nice that with these additional tools, they can fill more roles. That's really, really cool to see. I just think that like an optimal raid comp, um, wild growth isn't going to be, isn't going to be like super great. Um, and I think that's the one a lot of people are looking forward to the most out of all these. It's kind of like maybe life bloom is the other one. For sure, but I think these two are definitely the two that, like, the druid mains are looking at and salivating. And it's it's not that they're bad spells at all. Like, don't get me wrong, because, like, when used in the proper situation, they're great spells. It's just I really do question, like, like Life Bloom, I think, is going to have a place just because of how it can work with tanks and stuff like that. But I, I think Wild Growth is going to be harder to fit in. And, uh, yeah... But we'll have to see if they give uh, Druid some more stuff. I'm wondering if they're going to give Druid Nourish. Um, that'd be funny. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. But it, it, it's good stuff regardless. I mean, like, this stuff only helps, like I said. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's fun to see Druids get some love. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. But thanks for watching. And I will come back to you guys with the fourth and final one on Paladin tomorrow. So see you then.